So this is a $50 keyboard from Amazon. And this is a $350 keyboard from Glorious that has a fully aluminum backplate and weighs three pounds. So in today's video, I really wanted to talk about the differences between these two boards. Why is this board $300 more than the Amazon board? And can you make the Amazon board just as good as the $350 one? I've bought a lot of keyboards in my time on YouTube. I have about 15 keyboards and most of them are this kind. So I think I have enough experience to finally talk about the differences here. So if you're wondering which keyboard you should buy, how much money you should spend on a keyboard, I think this video is for you. Before we get into explaining the differences between a cheap and a premium board, we have to quickly go over what a board is actually made of. The first thing we're gonna talk about is the case, and the case is literally just the casing around the board. There's tons of options, and generally speaking, the material and style is mostly just preference. The PCB is something that can be thought of as the brains of the operation. It's the piece of tech inside that actually controls sending keystrokes to your computer. The plate is a physical layer that helps align and hold the switches and stabilizers in place, and this can come in many materials and has many different mounting options, which can have effects on the overall sound and feel of the board. The switches are the things that actually control when you press a key and sending it to the PCB, which sends it to the computer. Switches are the things that you know of probably the most from mechanical keyboards because they're the things that actually make mechanical keyboards sound the way they do. The other thing switches do is change the feel of a keyboard. When you're actually pushing a key, the switches determine what it feels like. Stabilizers are really just a thing that stabilizes longer keycaps. You can think of these as the space bar or the shift key or the enter key. All of these are going to have stabilizers to make sure these keys don't rattle around while you're pressing them. As for connection options, most keyboards these days are going to be connected through a USB-C into the board and a normal USB-A connection into your computer. At the end of the day, cable quality really just comes down to aesthetics, aka how good does your cable look sitting on your desk. It's not something that I really take into consideration, but it's always nice when manufacturers include nicer cables. And last but definitely not least, keycaps. And there's tons of different materials and styles and looks, but the two that we really want to focus on are PBT and ABS. All you need to know right now is ABS tends to be cheaper to produce, but over time these caps do leave an oily residue and they look much more shiny. PBT is generally higher quality and has a slight textured feel, which removes that oily residue possibility. So first up, let's chat about the cheaper keyboard. And I want to make it really clear, there's nothing wrong with a cheaper keyboard. By cheap, I'm purely talking about the price. There's actually plenty of cheaper keyboards that perform quite well, so I'm not going to be knocking cheaper keyboards, purely just talking about the differences of what you get when you spend a lot more money on a keyboard. First off, cheaper keyboards are mostly plastic construction for the casing. This can cause them to feel lighter and maybe a little more rattly. On the plus side, this allows for some really cool case stylings like acrylic and semi-opaque that really let the RGB shine through something that premium boards don't necessarily have the option to do because a lot of the times they're made with metal. So if you're somebody who really likes the way that RGB looks, a cheaper keyboard might be the better option for you. These keyboards are typically going to have what we call die sub ABS keycaps. All this really means is that the keycaps over time might rub off or become more smooth and shiny as the coatings wear off. This isn't gonna stop you from removing the keycaps and swapping them for another kit if you'd like, as all of the keycaps on these boards simply pop off with a keycap puller and can be swapped at any time for any other compatible keycaps. These keyboards are generally also not going to include any pre-installed foam or any sort of gasket mounted plating. So the noise canceling and the overall fock of these keyboards tends to be worse straight out of the box. As for the stabilizers, Cheaper keyboards tend to have the plate mounted generic stabilizers that are going to come unlubed. All this really means is that it might be a little bit more work for you to remove them and lube them later, but it's generally still possible. You can also buy other plate mounted stabilizers and swap them out, but this is of course going to be easier with non plate mounted stabilizers. One of the plus sides to these cheaper boards is typically they can be modded to be much better if you're willing to put in the time and the effort. For example, the GK61 is by default hot swappable. This means that you can take out the pre-installed switches, lube them, or even replace them with the other switches and change the entire sound and feel of the board. Having extra switches lying around means I can swap them out from board to board, depending on what I'm going for. The only thing to watch out for is compatibility as some switches are three pin and some are five pin. One thing that can be kind of an eye-opener about cheaper keyboards is that for a large majority of them, 
They're just reproductions of others with slightly different names. For example, my SK61, GK61, all of the Kraken keyboards, and even High Ground's early keyboards are all exactly the same keyboard. They might have some differences like Bluetooth capability, but the brand name essentially doesn't matter. They're all the same generic keyboard, rebranded with different names and different keycaps or casings. One more less thought about byproduct of a cheaper keyboard is that the support and software tend to lean towards the less existent side. Software may exist, but because these aren't huge brand names, it tends to be more buggy and a little more sketchy to download sometimes. A good example was back when I bought my RK61, the only way to get the software was to download it from a sketchy Chinese website from a Google Drive link, not something I was really comfortable with. Support tends to follow the same trends as smaller companies tend not to be able to hold a full support team, so you kind of test your luck if you ever need official support for your board. So the funny thing is when we're talking about a more premium keyboard, they actually have more in common with the cheaper keyboard than they have differences. A premium keyboard still has all of the same components that we talked about, a case, a PCB, switches, stabilizers, and keycaps. The only difference being how those components are actually constructed or applied to the keyboard. To start off, premium boards are generally made of more premium materials. And in the case of my GMMK Pro, it's solid machined aluminum. In my opinion though, metal is the absolute best looking material for a case to be made out of, especially this raw aluminum look. A weird trend for more expensive boards is to put some sort of logo or branding on the bottom of the board. I don't know why, and honestly I don't mind, because it's not visible when the board's placed on any surface. If anything, it just adds more depth to the board and makes it feel more premium. The other thing to note about the general design and styling of more premium boards is that they tend to lean more custom. What I mean by that is these aren't rebranded GK61s. They're made from the ground up with selective styling and design choices to set the board apart from others. The rotary encoder knob on my GMMK Pro is a great example of this, as is the offset arrow keys and the extra function row on the right hand side. All of these were design choices that, when put together with the rest of the board, creates a really custom design and feel, which is what you're paying for. When it comes to keycaps on more premium boards, what you start to see more of are double shot and PBT keycaps. The double shot is just a term that means the see-through part of the keycap is actually created separately from the rest, so that when combined, no matter how much wear and tear the caps get, the legends will never fade. This is really good if you have an RGB keyboard. As for PBT, that's just another material that is used as an alternative to ABS. Like I said before, PBT tends to lean more matte and is considered higher quality as it doesn't shine over time. It has a more textured feel to it, which some people prefer. If you've ever heard some of those juicy, juicy keyboards online, there's a good chance they have what we call gasket mounted plate design. All this really means is that the mounting plate for the switches and stabilizers is mounted in between a layer of sound dampening foam. What this does is create a deeper and more full sounding keyboard. It's just one of the ways that the premium boards differentiate themselves from a less expensive board. More premium boards also offer different kinds of stabilizers, and in the case of my GMMK Pro, they have their own customized GOAT stabilizers that they design themselves, which are offered for only $5 when you buy the board. Stabilizers on more premium boards also tend to be what we call PCB mounted, which again, all it really does is add more thock or more deeper noises to the keyboard when you're pushing down the keys. Premium boards also tend to include a little bit more in terms of accessories, mainly the cable. The cable on all of the more expensive boards that I've gotten have been nice braided cables that don't bunch up or cause a bunch of cable mess. Although, if I'm being honest, my $100 HyperX Alloy Origins Core included a nice black braided cable, so it's really hit or miss on this area of keyboards. Overall, what a more premium board does is allow for a nicer and more full typing experience. You won't really see a change in your typing speed if you change to a more expensive keyboard, for example. However, you might notice a change in the feel or the sound of your board. More premium boards allow for a much more fine tuning of the sound and the feel because they include things like gasket mounted plates and heavier materials, making the overall board be much more sound dampening. There's also less rattling because the stabilizers are typically PCB mounted, which is just gonna give you that much nicer sound. So that's really all there is to it, to the differences between these two keyboards. And at the end of the day, do you need the $50 one or the $350 one, or maybe even more expensive? And I think at the end of the day, like everything else, it just comes down to preference. Like I said, functionally, these two keyboards do the exact same thing. They type, there's no differences on what they can actually do besides maybe this rotary encoder knob, which you don't really need it. It's not gonna change your actual typing experience. And the other thing to keep in mind is that 
Keyboards like this can be modded. You can lube the switches, lube the stabilizers, switch out the keycaps. You can do a lot of things to make these keyboards sound just as good, if not better, than the $350 keyboard that comes straight out of the box, already modified, lubed, all those kind of things. So my overall suggestion would be if you don't have keyboards yet, you're still getting into the hobby, you don't have a lot of baseline to go off of, go for the cheaper one. There's no issue having a cheaper keyboard and actually it's probably better because then you can buy a few of them, you can swap out the switches and the stabilizers and the keycaps on this, the cheaper board and figure out what you actually like to do. Do you like having a mechanical keyboard at all? You might not and if you bought a $350 board, it might be a bad decision right off the bat. So if you're new to the hobby, go for the cheaper, less expensive one. If you've been in the hobby for a while and you know what you like and you want to try out that more premium one, the GMMK Pro might be for you. It's an amazing board, probably my favorite one that I have, and uh, I'm gonna be using that as my primary for a long time. So if you enjoyed this video, let me know, leave a like, subscribe, all those kind of things. If you have any questions, comments, leave them down below. I love reading and responding to those. Other than that, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.